For an absolute beginner in IT nowadays, breaking into the career of AI is definitely exciting. However, for beginners, it can feel overwhelming. What if I told you that there is a faster path and an easier path with higher chances of being hired as you work towards the AIE career goal that you have. In this video, I'll explain to you how starting with cloud and DevOps is going to be the most practical and the fastest one to build the prerequisites for AI engineering while you are hired and making money. Please consider subscribing to the channel, give us a like and share in order to benefit the masses with this video. This video is based on the previous video where I explained the best path from cloud and DevOps into machine learning. And again, I'm using ChatGPT or AI to help us build that roadmap and to find the facts and analyze why this is the recommended and the best path to take. So let's go ahead and look at the second question that we have asked. Please watch the previous video if you haven't done so yet. I need to get into AI engineering. So which path would be faster in that case for a complete or an absolute beginner in IT? And the answer was for absolute beginner with no background in IT, be job ready much faster in cloud and DevOps than in AI engineering. And here's a clear comparison. This is what it would take for AI engineering. And this is what we have seen for cloud and DevOps. So now it's comparing the two side by side. So time to job readiness, here it's six to eight months with focused effort. And here it's 18 to 24 months realistically with strong math and coding. Now we are talking about AI engineering. So you will be an AI engineer. We are not talking about LLM engineer or prompt engineer. We are talking about being a solid AI engineer. Learning curve. Here is moderate, mostly tool scripting and infrastructure concepts. Here it's high because it requires a lot of math, a lot of machine learning theory, algorithms, and deep coding. Math requirements, minimal, basic logic and scripting. While here it's heavy, linear algebra, calculus, probability, and statistics. Programming requirements. You need bash, Python for scripting and automation. Whereas here you need strong Python, strong data structure, strong machine learning frameworks, like PyTorch and TensorFlow. Job roles available, many entry level, junior DevOps cloud support and SRE. Here, few entry level, mostly research focused or senior heavy. Certification that would help AWS Azure, cloud certs, Docker, Kubernetes, and Ansible and so on and Terraform. Here, TensorFlow certification, AWS machine learning specialty, but not enough alone. So you don't get these certificates and think you are ready for these jobs. Project complexity. Here, infrastructure setups, automation, CI CD pipelines. These are the projects that you are going to use to highlight your portfolio and capabilities. While here, you want to prove that you have done building and training and tuning models, complex and compute heavy work or projects that you have done. Market demand. It's high and growing across all industries. Here, it's high also, but more competitive and academic or research or scientific in nature. Remote and freelance work. There are so many here. There are some, but often requires higher degrees, higher academic degrees that you have done research or deep research into that field. So conclusion, cloud and DevOps is the practical path for beginners. It's faster path to employment, which is everyone needs. I don't want to be studying for 24 months, paying from my own money for bread and butter and for all the necessities of life while I have no job. I would like to jump on a jump stone and use this as a launch pad to fund the remaining of my path to my goal. That's what we need to do. But if I'm studying for 18 or 12, 24 months, how many of you, what's the percentage that will stretch till the end and how many will drop in between or along the path? Lower barrier to entry, cloud and DevOps, more accessible certification you can prove skills faster with industry recognized certificates and wider job pool for entry level roles including support infrastructure automation and devops or ci cd so recommendation again start with cloud and devops to get into it fast and build a solid technical foundation and if you are passionate about ai you will already have cloud and devops skills which are critical components 
of real-world AI deployments, MLOps, making it easier to transition into AI engineering with a stronger base. So you are not a newbie when you get into AI. You will have a lot of background about many things. Maybe you will be lacking a little bit about AI engineering, but then that will be the only glitch. As opposed to as a beginner, you don't have any field experience. You haven't done anything uh, cloud and DevOps in production. You haven't done anything machine learning in production. And you have, you have not done anything in AI engineering, but you'd like to become an AI engineer. So the barrier to entry is really high compared to the others. All right, so let's put this side by side on something that you can visualize and you can compare. The information we have received from here, let's put it on a drawing and let's put the alternatives that we have discussed. So this is what we have looked at. We're talking about an absolute beginner. This is the time axis, it's the time it will take to reach where you should be. So again, let's put the graph and the visual, and that will be a continuation from the previous video about cloud and DevOps into machine learning and machine learning ops. So let's put that visually, what we have discussed here, so you can map that into a plan in your mind. So we have looked at this before. So these are the discrete path. This was for cloud and machine learning that we have discussed earlier. And as we have seen now, that this is going to be a steep learning curve, like really higher barrier of entry or point of entry. It takes 18 to 24 months and maybe more. So why not again follow the same logic and if this is the time axis then why don't i jump into cloud and devops from there i can add machine learning or machine learning ops and then jump into here as a job or as an aspiration or maybe work part-time on this one or try to join part-time another team in my corporate in order to become a machine learning ops engineer i'm not going to repeat that video but from here now you have a shorter learning curve compared to this one it can be 10 months, can be 12 months, or you can even divide it into steps. Prompt engineer, LM engineer, build these skills and then move into the AI engineering part. So this way, at least you have many steps beforehand that you can be hired at. Your chances of being hired are much higher and you are within IT. So your chance of venturing into AI is going to be much smoother, the likelihood is going to be much higher, and you are already having a job that is paying for your expenses. So less stress and much better path to be hired as an AI engineer or into the AI field in general. And don't forget that we have broken down the first step into multiple steps. So for an absolute beginner in IT, now we have so many smaller or relatively smaller steps and each one of them is going to qualify you to apply for certain jobs on the way to AI engineer. So even if it goes south and for whatever reason you get sick, you lose interest or anything, at least you have already made landing stones where you can be hired from and life is good and you have your income and that is a success in itself even if for whatever reason you did not continue all the way to the AI engineer, although I know that these smaller successes are going to motivate you to go all the way till the end. All right, hopefully this is clear. And now you understand why I am a strong believer that cloud and DevOps is the easiest into the hot skills right now and the in-demand jobs. And then from there, machine learning, ML ops, and then from there, get into AI. All right, so hopefully that was beneficial. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the notification to get the new videos. And also please give us a like and share so the video can reach more people and can benefit more people. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.